everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood hangar hobbit here, and welcome aboard the G55S1, rank 3, battle rating 4.7, for the pasta boys! And oh, look what we got down here, it's the bloody terrible dive bomber! Oh, you poor thing, that bird is a pile of crap! Yeah, guess what, you're not gonna make it to that base today, buddy, I'm sorry, but yeah... You're not going to make it. I'm afraid not. Thanks for playing, though. I do appreciate that. Ah, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. I always love listening to Dino when I freaking fly this thing. Or any of the Italians. You can't go wrong with Dean Martin. Oh, another one. <laughs> Really? Yep, he thinks he's a fighter. Oh, isn't that adorable? The bloody terrible dive bomber thinks he's going to get up here and be all top gun. Oh, that's so cute. Look at the poor little thing try. Yeah, well, guess what, bloody terrible dive bomber? Uh, it's not going to work out for you. No. Ugh. I know Bohica loves that thing, but... Oh, God, it's a pile of crap. It's so bad. I mean, good grief. If you don't turn on all the instructor crap, it friggin' can't even fly in a straight line without flipping over. And even with all the instructor crap, it handles like a bus with two flat tires and a dead carburetor. Uh, well, I guess with Bohica having three guys constantly covering his ass, pretty much anything would probably be enjoyable. But for somebody flying solo? Eh, no. No, it's not fun. That's not a fun bird. It is a bloody terrible dive bomber. Oh, but let me tell you a little bit about this bird. The G-55. One of those birds just like the A7M1. Or the freaking 109K4, where everybody said after the war, man, that was a great bird. Shame he didn't come up with it three years ago when you could have actually used the damn thing. Yeah, because by the time they came out with this sucker, and yeah, the Americans were already starting to step foot on Italy, so yeah, it didn't really help. Uh, help the Germans, though. Germans ended up using over 40 of them suckers. Heck yeah, they grabbed as many of them as they could because eh, things weren't going too good on the Ost front at that time. So yeah, anything that was a good fighter, they were more than happy to take. Now come on, Gaijin, why not give us one of these in the Luftwaffles as a Tier 4 premium? Oh yes. Yes, friggin' the Germans don't have any good Tier 4 premium fighters. This would be a perfect tier 4 premium. Heck yeah, I'd put it tier 4, battle rating 4.7, in the beautiful Luftwaffe colors. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, I would just love the heck out of that. Oh, heck yes. That thing would be so enjoyable. Uh, speaking of enjoyable, let me know if you want to see the XP55 or the PM1 next. Because those are my two new toys I've been playing with. Oh, oh, so very much. I love new toys. Yeah. I may be an old hobbit, but uh, you give me a new toy. Especially one that's fun. Oh, I'm going to play with my toys. Oh, heck yeah, you know that. Oh, speaking of Play-Doh. Look at that. They're all in a big old wad. Now, you know there's some birds that I can't stand to jump into a fur ball with. Yeah, Mustangs with the way they kind of lock up once you get them really fat. Yeah, no. Thunderbolts, though. I love to jump into a fur ball with a Thunderbolt. I'll just go ripping right through the center of them. But, yeah. This is one of those birds where you go, oh, yeah, when you see yourself a fur ball. Because this baby, oh, she is a stallion. She can gallop. She can dance. You do have to watch, though. You don't want to be sitting there trying to turn fight a spit in this thing. And I've seen a lot of guys make that mistake. This thing is good for about two really tight turns. But that's it. 
Don't keep going after two. If you can't get them in two, uh, break a gap, retry. Don't keep going. After two, you're going to start bleeding like a stuck hog. So, yeah, don't do that. That would be bad. Oh, ooh, looky. We got cobras. We got mustangs. We got all kinds of lovely snacks. Oh, yes. Oh, you come here, cobra boy. You come here. Come here with that big old hot dog launcher. Mmm. Oh, he's getting a little too wibbly wobbly. That's okay. There's plenty of targets out here. Let's see. Which one do I want to go for next? Cobra boy? No. Oh. T Swiller! It's a T Swiller! All T Swillers must die. Yes. Oh, there's Cobra boy. I was wondering where you went off to. You come here, Cobra boy. Oh. Ooh, double kill. Ooh, he made. He downright PO'd at me, ain't he? Oh. I wonder if I can get an old baby a triple. Oh, would you come here? Come on, little Mustang. And, ooh, I think he's going splat. Yep, he was already dead. Oh, well. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at all the freaking smoking wreck. Whoa, it's over? Dang. Well, put on my beautiful pasta trail, because, wow, that was quick. Man, they just folded like a house of cards, didn't they? Woo, but man, that's so fun. It's one of the things I love in this bird. Just get them all in a big old Donnie Brook and just tear them up. Oh, heck yeah. Always a blast. All right, come on, Gajan, tick her down. Show us how we did. And... Oh, yay! First place, four kills. I'm more than happy to take that. Now, I'm just letting you know, you're not going to see the last 23 minutes of this match because, well, you kind of already did see the last 23 minutes of this match, only at five times speed. Yes, this was the Machinist 5772 Douchebag of the Day match, or as we like to call it, the Fuck Nugget Incident. Yeah. Where that little douche took a 14 minute match and turned it into a 35, 30 freaking 7 minute parking simulator. Mm. I'm not going to let him ruin my fun. No. Especially when I got snacks. Oh, big, fat, juicy, tasty snacks. Oh, B-17s. I don't know why anybody flies those anymore. Oh. I'll take your friend first. I always go for the tail end, Charlie's. Oh. Ooh. Yep. Sorry, tail end, Charlie. You were the slow antelope. And that's never a good thing to be in a boomer. But that's okay. I don't think your buddy's going to be going anywhere either. Yep. Oh, look at him. He's diving hard. You don't watch it. He's going to rip. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work for you, buddy. Oh, yep, that's what I knew would happen. Yep, he pushed it a little too hard and snap, go to wings. Now, I know Joe says, you know, you shouldn't go for the bombers. I have to say, wrong. I believe it's the exact opposite. Why? Because if you don't go for the bombers, your entire bloody team is going to chase them like retarded dogs chasing a truck. And if you're smart enough to know how to actually kill a boomer then you can actually save quite a few members of your team because I have seen so many morons line up to tail set a B-17 while it calmly ripped them a new butthole that, yeah, I would rather if I'm in the way, I'm not going to chase a boomer. Don't, don't, no. Never chase the boomers. That's stupid. It's not like they have anywhere to go. It takes them three forevers to get down. Don't chase the boomer. But if you're already climbing and you see a boomer headed towards you, just do like that. Just smack them, get them out of the way, so that your retards on your team will not be spending their entire time going from one side of the map to the other trying to catch the stupid things. Yeah. This is a public service announcement from your friendly neighborhood hangar hobbit. Yeah. Don't let morons chase boomers. Oh. But looky here. Twin stangs and thunderbolts. Lovely, tasty treats. Oh, this thing is one of those birds that you don't really need a whole lot of altitude with. 
you know, I always say you should climb, but yeah, 4.7 BR against USA teams. You know what you're getting. Tanker trash. Lousy farming tanker trash. That you can chop down like cattle. Yeah. Oh, where you think you're going, buttercup? Yeah, you don't think I'm just going to let you keep on farming, do you? Here, ki- Aww. And the douchebag purposely throws it into the freaking trees to deny the kill. Cause hey, it's a USA player. Are you really surprised? I'm not. Uh, USA teams. Taking douchebaggery to a whole new level. Now since there ain't a whole lot to talk about as far as this bird and his combat action is concerned, maybe we can talk about something else. Like how you should fly this bird and common mistakes I see people make that you really shouldn't do. Look at what I'm doing right now. The bad guys are over there. I'm climbing over here. Now why am I doing that? The G55 has a good climb rate. That's right, it does have a pretty dang decent climb rate. But you don't want it to get dived on while it's slow and in a climb. That's never, never good with this thing. Because this rudder, if you get this thing really slow, popping that rudder, it's going to take a bit to flip this thing back over. And in that time, you could have a P-51 giving you all kinds of hot dogs to the face. That's never smart. In fact, I would suggest this with like 95% of your fighters out here. After you've made a good run, nailed you a few kills, if you need to get some altitude, go away from the engagement. Get yourself some space so that you can do a nice, good, hard climb without freaking getting caught low and slow, without freaking running out of energy. Because you don't ever want to do those things. There's nothing that will get you smacked more than somebody trying to prop hang to get up there to get into a fight and then not notice that when here comes the other one, smack right in the damn face and he can't do anything because he's at 90 kilometers an hour. His engine's redlined because he's been desperately trying to get up there so dang hard. No. Don't do that. Another thing you're going to have to watch with this thing is the temps. Now, you can ride this baby in the orange for quite a while. But the catch is, if you do that, once it hits red, uh, yeah, your whip's gone for until you land. Yeah, and this thing will progressively get worse and worse and worse. Like Joseph 2000 with his yak bug. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing with the G55s. If you let these things get into red line, you're going to have to just keep chopping that throttle and then chopping that throttle a little more and then chopping that throttle a little more just to keep that engine from freaking melting. And when you're in the middle of a freaking battle and every drop of performance counts, that's not what you want to be doing. No, no. I see so many guys make that mistake. They will just ride one right into the red to get up there in the super high climb. And then when it comes down to the actual dogfight where you really need that power, they ain't got it. Their engine's overheated. They ain't got no more power left. No, don't do that. Oh, but looky what we got here. Oh, this is what I live for. Oh, hell yeah. XP 55. I've got the energy. He's got the agility. We're all alone. It's just the two of us, buddy. We're going to dance. You ready to dance with the Italian stallion? Come on, buddy. That's right. Come on up for me. Let's play. Oh, I love the XP-55. It is such an agile little thing. Oh, it is just like flying a kite. It is super, super maneuverable. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't have the XP-55, I would actually be worried right now. But, yeah, I've been flying mine. I know exactly what it can and it can't do. One thing is it's not great in the straight line speed. Yeah, you are not going to outrun a G-55 and a friggin' XP-55. 
But I'm hoping I can bait him on up. Because, yeah, I think I can beat him in the energy fight. Come on, buddy. That's it. Pull up for me. I'm right here. You want to get me before Logos gets over here? Yeah, I also want to thank again Logos and Wavius Waffer for sticking around with me during that freaking 20-something minute slog with that freaking douchebag runway camper. Oh, it sucks when you're sitting there all alone and not nothing to do but sit there and try to bait out a freaking runway camper. It was so much nicer when I had company. Oh, oh, there you are. That's it. See, I'm right here. Oh, oh, you just about run out of energy, hadn't you, buddy? That's it. Yes, try to get me into a turn fight. That's a smart move. Very good, very good. I'm not going to fall for it, but if I was one of them that was that stupid, yeah, that would be a very good move. Yeah. See, now you're making a mistake. Trying to keep this thing in a climbing spiral, yeah, you're going to lose energy before I do, buddy. Yep. And I think it's all over right about here. Yep, it's all over but the fat lady singing. So you just come here. Oh, he managed to dodge that one. Good job, buddy, but uh, you can't keep pulling up when you've got that little energy. Because that's what's going to happen right there. Oh, I do appreciate that, though, buddy. That was a great duel. Oh, I just so love being able to do a nice little energy dance like that. Don't you? Doesn't that just make you happy? Have a nice little one-on-one -on -one duel? I always think those are just bloody great. Ah. Shame that the rest of the match turned out to be a 23-minute freaking parking simulator. Thanks a lot, Machinist 7552 or 5772 or whatever. Fuck nugget. Ah. Oh, four kills, second place on the team. And we won, and he didn't get shit. So, yeah. That made me happy. Okay, let's see how she paid, boy and girl. Heck yeah, for not premium. Not gonna complain. Not like I needed it, though. Oh, so what do I think about this bird? Oh, it is a stallion. This thing can run. She can gallop. Oh, she can dance. Yeah, the repair price at 24K is a little high. Honestly, unless you fly like a dumbass, you shouldn't have to really worry about it. Because, I mean, good God, this thing has got the performance, it's got the energy, it's got the firepower. Yeah, as long as you don't fly like a complete nut bar, this thing should make you money pretty much every run. I mean, God, she is just a dream. Great climb, great high-speed dive handle, good for about two turns. All in all, I would say yes fly this beautiful italian stallion take her out and let her run you will have a blast well be sure to like and share and i hope to see you up there in the clouds have a good one y'all